Hey guys, and welcome back to the FPL Pop In podcast brought to you by the FPL Journal. This is episode 10, and we're finally in double figures. And after the Halloween horrors last week, there are some FPL horrors, at least for me anyway. I'm Mictavius, and I'm joined, as always, by your friend and mine, Nymphria. Hey Nim, how are you feeling this week? Hey guys, yep, not too bad. Bad game week again, but we'll get on to that later on. (laughs) (laughs) I think it was was a pretty bad game week on this show in general. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we we pretty much let the FPL side down in general. Uh, (laughs) uh, Shall we jump straight in with last week's fixtures? Yeah, sounds like a great place to start. Um, Our heavyweight fixture was a little bit more exciting than we thought. Actually, oh. although the result doesn't really suggest it. Nah. Chelsea, one nil winners over Manchester United. Mm-hmm. Close with the prediction. I went one all. Yeah, and I went two all. Which, it, to be fair, it could have been. We you know, flatter was, these teams. We yeah, always expect we them to score so many more goals than they actually do. <laughs> yeah. In all fairness. It's because we want exciting games. Yeah, it well... Could have, it could have been easily 2-2, but it, it wasn't. Yeah. And Chelsea did turn around their 3 nil thrashing. To grab a win against Jose's side, who quite obviously forgot to park the bus this time. <laughs> yeah, it may, I think it got stalled on the motorway on the way down. Yeah. Uh, possession was close, though. Uh, 54% to Chelsea, 46% to Man United. Uh, I think that Chelsea were just a bit better with their chances, really. They had eight shots on target to Man United's two. So, mm. you know. They... And it was just, really, it was just a bit of poor defending. Yeah. Towards the end, that just let Morata have that free header. So is a Chelsea player necessary in our FPL teams now? Loaded mm. question there. It's just one. You know? Aspilicueta Morata, that, that duo seems to be quite well. And Hazard Definitely. looked very dangerous. Mm. Obviously they didn't score too many, but... And they've got some great runner games coming up. They now. do. It's a lot of green. It's like a forest. I know. <laughs> It's the kind of run of games that, you know, most Premier League teams dream of for a season. So mm. they should really be taking advantage of it. It's really just a Liverpool game. But could you, speaking of Morata, could you swap out Lukaku for Morata? He's been blanking yeah. quite a lot recently. I'm not sure. I mean, you, you might be asking the wrong person here. Somebody who's on a wild card. <sighs> And is swapping and changing, dillying and a dallying, a willian and a nillian here and there. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows what could happen? Morata could end up there, Lukaku could end up there, Aguero could end up in that spot. We'll get, you know, we'll chat more about my side later on. (laughs) Uh, We'll get onto a bit more about my team later on, but for now we'll chat about the supporting act, which was Man City Arsenal. Uh, Which was your team. It was my team. And, and I got a correct prediction. Yes, finally, <laughs> welcome to the correct predictions club Hello. over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's 3-1 to yep. City. I said 4-1, so, mm, you they, know. They could, have, they could have had that. Again, but, yeah. flattering the teams, flattering the teams. But um, we didn't see anything other than a City win there, did we? Really? No, and they I don't just, think many people did. It just didn't disappoint. Arsene Wenger, what is he doing? Changing up the lineup, going into one of the biggest matches of the Premier League off of the bounce of two wins against mm-hmm. other teams with that particular lineup and doing brilliantly. And then he says, Yeah, City next, let's just swap that about. Let's put a Wobie in. Why not? Let's just shove Lacazette on the bench. Why do we need him? <laughs> maybe he's getting jealous of everyone complaining about being, about being pepped. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, I want everyone to be vengered. Oh, man, it's just, I I just despair. I despair. I, I don't know. Uh, I never a... felt so kind of confused by my team as I have done this season and... That makes me start to question how I feel about the management at the club. Are you going to dust off your airplane keys and get back flying across the Emirates with your with your sign out the back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hashtag Wenger out sign. Well, I, I haven't yet been on the hashtag Wenger out train. But, or plane, as the case may be. Plane, train, car, it's all the same. Um, but... 
I am strongly considering joining, getting some air miles <laughs> up Normally on that it's a thing. Canoe without a paddle. Because I just think we're struggling. But let's just get away from the horribleness that is Arsenal because they're having about as good a time as my FPL season is. <laughs> Just wanted to stick out there a little watch list player to keep an eye out for, and that is Fernandinho. Fernandinho, yeah. Two goals and two assists in the last four matches at just 5.2 mil. I'm seriously considering keeping him because I've already put him into my wildcard draft. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm seriously considering keeping him in that draft team. It's so. almost like having a decore in a big team. Yeah. He's around that sort of price. Yeah, it is. And at the start of the season, he wasn't really bringing much because obviously he's not really... When he's got other attacking players around him, you know, it, he finds it hard to grab the points that they're getting. Now that City have found their rhythm a little bit, Ferdinandinho is definitely banking in on some of those points. Well, the result of that game wasn't a surprise. Which leads us quite nicely on to our surprise fixtures from last week. Uh-huh. Mine of which was Stoke versus Leicester. Another close prediction here. I predicted 2-1 Stoke. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being 2-2. Mm, you know, Crouchy either. coming up with that second Stoke goal. Even though Leicester had already ruined my prediction by then. Um, Mares looking good. Vardy was sharp. Ugh. Gray looking more of a threat as each game goes past. You know, I'm not sure how much he is, but... He's definitely looking like a bargain. But one of the standout players from that game must be Shakiri. Shakiri, Shakiri. Never really knew that he could play football like that. <laughs> well, uh, I did because he was actually in my kind of pre-season review video. Oh, yeah. where, can, where can people find to watch that? On my YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Yeah, you should, you go should watch that. always check that out, although I haven't done a few videos for a while, but I will be back to it soon, promise. <laughs> there could be all sorts of mystic foresightness. Yeah, and um, that is possibly one of them. Mm. Yes. How yeah, should I do that? But yes, he had a bit of a quiet start to the season, but now he seems to be settling in more and being more of a, a dominant player in that Stoke side. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's going to be hard for us FPL players is, is that because Stoke aren't a consistently good team, as in they, they don't seem to be winning matches as often as some of the kind of other teams in their bracket that we would consider, mm. mm-hmm. um, a Bournemouth and Brighton and that sort of thing. It's always difficult to kind of then say, well, which player do we definitely get from that team? Because at one point, Juf was looking <laughs> really quite good yeah i've had two promoting mm. in my team um and so now shakiri starts firing you know it's it's a tough one i mean you know maybe maybe it's good kind of fourth or fifth player to have maybe third yeah player. i wouldn't build your midfield around no it. no true but. but not so surprising i had the liverpool west town game and we weren't very surprised because it was a Liverpool win. Yeah. And I went 3-2 for this one. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being 4-1 that I had guessed for the Arsenal-Man City game. So I got prediction right. It was just for the Didn't. wrong game. Yeah. So, you know. Um, you had the right amount of goals. Yeah. Um, Mane back. The Mane May is Mane. back with two assists. Looking good, looking sharp. It's going to be difficult to know whether to have him or Salah going forward. And history just seems to be repeating itself for West Ham and their terrible record against Liverpool. Yeah, it's not looking all too great in East London. No. Pretty uninspiring performance. Um, They went and sacked the manager. They did. And that... Happens to be our Poppic of the Week. <gasps> Poppic of the Week. <laughs> Voted by our listeners with 38% was the sacking of Slavan Village at West Ham and his replacement being announced as David Moyes of all Ooh. people. Oof. Oof. Look at you, can, you can feel the excitement in the room. I know. That's the fourth Premier League manager to be sacked this season. 
Yep, just and Palace was the first. <laughs> racking it up. I mean, that's already a fifth of the league, and we're only in November. <laughs> to think then. <laughs> How long has it been? <laughs> is it Christmas yet? <laughs> yes, it is, because it's on TV. <laughs> Do I get a second wild card already? <laughs> <laughs> you can have a free hit chip. No. No. Yeah, pretty uninspiring selection there from West Ham. If I say so, in my humble opinion, um, I thought Roy Hodgson was a bit unexciting <laughs> as a pick. I mean, you know, we, we're doing a bit better now, so we probably might do all right. Yeah. But um, the fact that they've given Moyes a six-month contract till the end of the season doesn't exactly show a lot of faith and a lot of hope yeah, that he's going to no do a good job. There is there. It's no a commitment. They could really have gone for someone younger, someone who hasn't been sacked by their last three clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe giving him a bit more time. Oh, bless him. <laughs> you feel a bit sorry for him, really. You feel like you want him to do well somewhere, you know. Just so people don't have that kind of, you know, basically the 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 disappointment. <laughs> that we, the know. feeling that he's useless. I never said that. You did. I did. And I'll probably come back to this later in the season and say, well, how stupid I was. <laughs> When West Ham are in the Europa League positions. <laughs> but if he continues his points per game in the Premier League, uh-huh. then they won't survive. Because right. over okay. the course of his Premier League career uh-huh. at Everton, Manchester United, Sunderland, even though I can't really describe that football as Premier League, um, he basically got 1.2 points a game. Oof. Which is, you know, is not wonderful. It's not great. Mm-hmm. But if they continue, if he continued that over the remaining rest of the season, they'd only end up with about twenty nine points, something like that, Oof, nice. which isn't the magic forty. That. No. And no. Billich was doing a lot better. That's he good got news one point three three. Palace, that's one less place to take. To, yeah, you know, if they to can go bottom, bottom we, you know, <laughs> we might be eighty. Yeah. You might get lucky. You never know. <laughs> but what could be more exciting than? Moyes on the field is Moyes off the field uh-huh. with his new boss Karen Brady. Oh yeah. After that whole slapping the reporter sexism row that erupted, Oof. what poor, back in the spring sometime. Yeah. That could be a very cold reception. Yeah, interesting on that one. I'll be interested to see that in the tunnel. Yeah. Probably more than any of the West Ham games to come. I I don't think you'd want to mess with Karen. Really. No, she's, she's a scary woman. She's a pretty cool chick. You know, I think I think she's pretty kind of, you know, she knows her own mind. And if she's got something to say, she'll say it. It will be quite interesting, I think, with David Moyes. So I have to see how that one plays out. But we all know we should have been discussing how Sterling is a cheat, right? This is what we should be discussing <laughs> here. <laughs> this David Moyes, Lavin Billich rubbish should <laughs> all be... billets, bowl, bitch. <laughs> we all know it should be that sterling's a cheating you know what's it but that's okay it's okay you're not bitter or anything, i'm not you? bitter because i had him in my fbl team <laughs> so... <laughs> i'm not bitter because i benefited from yeah it. i benefited from it you know poor old arsenal didn't however you know no but one know. cheating goal one offside goal Whoa. 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 could have been a draw yeah, anyway, we, we, we best move on because the voters didn't vote for that one. No, so. no, they didn't. Yeah. They voted here and say Moyes was a bad choice. Mm-hmm. You have that in audio. In, you have in voice scripture. Documentation. Yeah. It was a bad choice. Gold, Sullivan, Brady probably didn't pick him. No. But yeah. I can't imagine she, she put her ballot paper in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, how did you get on with your points this week? Um, I pretty much moised Talking it. Talking about bad choices. <laughs> yeah, I, pr- I pretty much moised it. Um, I got 38 points, which is pretty disastrous, to be fair. Um, 576 mm. overall and knocks me down just inside the top 900k. Um, oh, how terrible for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, since I was up in... I was up 700k. I basically dropped 100k each week. For the last two or three weeks, which isn't great. No. My team value is only 100.3. Okay. I got about 40 points. 
that's four below the average so like you I'm just swimming down there in the terribleness <laughs> Uh, 545 points overall my overall rank is 1.8 ish so I'm just within that 2 million mark basically I put out my game week lineup onto twitter Friday evening and it had Elliot in goal and Daniels in defence over De Gea and Lascelles and I pretty much got berated for it. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty much like, what are you doing? You can't play anyone other than De Gea. He's just fantastic. You you just can't drop him. And if you can't drop him, then you probably should have Lascelles in to cover Newcastle, you know, in case they do well, seeing as you were going to play Elliot. Yeah. So I thought, you know... Let's stick a poll up here and see what the people actually think. Sure enough, they did vote in quite some numbers, a couple of hundred in the end. Ooh, and they did popular. Yeah, it was quite popular. And they did vote for De Gea and the Sals over Daniels and Elliot. So I had to do it then, didn't I? I had to put yeah, my money good. where my mouth was. They were part correct. <laughs> De Gea was the better choice in goal by one point. Mm. <laughs> it got three and De Gea got four. Uh, however, I probably should have kept Daniels exactly <laughs> where he was because, you know, he got a clean sheet. Yeah. And the cells did not get a clean no. sheet. So, yeah. Um, that really didn't help. Kind of pushed me down the rankings a bit. But um, who is your star man? Uh, my star man is a bit of a left field choice this week. Okay. Um, it's Lewis Dunk oh, okay. of Brighton, who, if you know how high... Slam it, dunk. Exactly. <laughs> he slam dunked um, a massive five points Oof. as, you know, joint highest scorer of the week, um, which isn't wonderful. Um, but he did surprise me this week. Him and Brighton had a pattern of keeping a clean sheet every three games. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't expecting a clean sheet this week. He should have got it next week. But he surprised <laughs> me and brought that forward a week and got a clean sheet now. But I'm kind of hoping that he now doesn't go another three weeks without getting a clean sheet. Mm. Because I may be doing quite a few changes Yeah. this week. And he's one of the ones that probably won't go out. And that third game is against Palace. So I don't want him to keep a clean sheet then, personally. Yeah, well... Yeah, so a Brighton defender is my star man, which makes me feel a little bit sick. <laughs> Who was yours? Uh, Richarlison. Oh, another so, left field. Yeah, bit bit out there. We all know he could have got more if uh, Cleverly had converted his penalty. <sighs> and Twitter blew up. Considering I have Cleverly in one of my draft <laughs> FPL teams, yeah, was not happy. You know, having Richarlison in a few teams and then obviously having um, Cleverly in a draft team. And it's not very clever, him. is it? No, it wasn't very clever of him. It wasn't. It wasn't very clever of him. Uh, you know, he played his four match points and he got me a goal, so Richarlison got me seven points and he was my highest scorer this game. Ooh, Woo! the lofty seven. Woo! It's two more than any of mine got. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's why, you, that's why you got two points higher than me overall. Now you can see, yeah, pretty much. And now you can see why I want to wild card. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, you know, what about your fire player? Um, ooh, I don't really have a fire player okay. for next game week. Simply because I don't know who's going to be in the team. Yeah, no, I know what you're, <laughs> um, I know what you're because, saying. Here. Because I'm, pro- I'm going to follow suit and spend these two weeks throwing people in and out of my team to form something that vaguely looks something quite good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, there could be anyone in that team. Ooh, it's exciting. Anyone. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. I could like it. could be David it. Moyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, just after how rubbish you've just said he is, yeah. I, I, I do not He do must be a better player than he is a manager. That. I do not condone that. Don't huh? do it. <laughs> no. no, maybe not. 
Um, as I'm considering my fire player, as my team would stand now, I would probably make it Richarlison because he is up against said drowning West Ham. However, um, obviously with me wild carding, a bit like you, it's a bit hard to say really just at this moment in time. Mm. I'm hoping that by wild carding, I'll bring in possibly better choices. I might just get as many Watford players as I can. If they're playing West Ham next. Well, there is always that possibility. But lightning only strikes once. Hey. <laughs> hey. It's like you've done this before. Oh, I know. And uh, my lightning pick happened to be a Choop Choop Moting. Choop Choop. <laughs> choop, 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 choop Moting. Chops. He loves the lightning assist every other game at the moment. Three in the last six. Ooh. I know, and that makes it quite difficult for me with this wildcard team. Do I keep him or not keep him? At the moment, Fernandinho has his spot. Mm. But, you know, I'm not sure. He's, he's one of those ones that just seems to be kind of, like you said, is that Bubbling stoke, away, that, that random stoke player that just happens to get a couple of points every couple of games. Yeah. You know? And what about you? What's your stroke of lightning over there? <laughs> <laughs> My stroke of lightning was not a player. Oh. It was a game. Hang on, you can't be switching up the rules over here. switching them up. No, you can't yeah. be doing this. It's lightning it's... player pick. That's what it says <laughs> on the paper, man. <laughs> I didn't write down player. Um, oh, well, that's, that's... I just put lightning pick because it actually... interpretation here. We're not doing Trump, you know? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You can't just be interpreting. Oof. It's just like, if we're just bringing this whole back to... Yeah, move on. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to go down a religious route there, and I thought, maybe not. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> don't do that. Oh, um, that's another discussion for later. Well, that's, on. that's what I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it early. Oh, right. Quickly. Okay. okay. Um, because my lightning was the Man City-Arsenal game, simply because that one game pretty much saved my game week even though two of my main strikers started on their benches. Right. That game got me 14 points, so pretty much half of what I got. Jesus and Lacazette starting on the bench. <laughs> Thankfully, they came on and scored each. Yep. They and did. Silva got an assist. Mm -hmm. So my lightning pick is basically, I don't think that's going to happen again. No. That My two strikers will start on the bench, come on, and both score. I'm not, and I'm not really sure you want it to either. Not really. It's just not really the way you want to earn your points, no. is it? <laughs> or just sitting him. there nervously for most of the game with your player on the bench, like, I don't, I don't come on, please come on. I don't know. Do you come on? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because I had like Carol first on my bench with one point, so you know. <laughs> yeah, that okay. So that was a definite. Please come on and do something. <laughs> but you know, talking of is suffering through those moments. Who would you say was your Duff Puff for the week? Um, my Duff Puff was Rob Elliott. Okay. Um, not because he was the lowest scorer, because I had lower scorers, um, but it was more the manner in which he got the points. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it was a pretty dire three o'clock bunch of games. Yeah. Um, and it looked like he was pretty much going to get a clean sheet. And then you see in the 92nd minute that Steve Cook has popped up and scored a goal mm -hmm. and completely wiped out of that clean sheet. Mm-hmm. Four points slipping through his fingers, and I was just like, "Oh, well, why?" Part of me was quite happy, obviously having put day or in over it. Oh yeah, by that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sorry to obviously delight slightly in your misery. There. Nah, it's fine. Um, you, you know. You're not sorry. Maybe not a little bit. No. But, um, my death puff is pretty much all of my forwards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Who's changing? <laughs> I know. Well, uh, they got they they got two points across the board, so each of them got two points. I mean, I sold Jesus for Kane <laughs> and captained him. I mean, what? Like seriously? And when I seen that Jesus wasn't starting, I thought, oh, thank God, I've Stroke done the genius. right thing. Yes, and then, yeah, he came on score. It's just, I, I just have no words. What a fluff, puff, muff, duff. A fluff, puff, muff, duff. A fluff, puff, muff, duff. I'll just move on to the transfers. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's quite a few transfers that I could do because my bin of sin is pretty much full up. <laughs> Loads of names going out. Bertrand, Carol, Norton, Ericsson. 
possibly, mm-hmm. even though I feel a bit dirty saying that. Um, and maybe my whole front line. There are a couple I'm divering on, which is Kolasniac, mm-hmm. who was going out the door, but then obviously had big points all last week. Mm-hmm. He came back in for another drink. He did. <laughs> he, I, I let him back in. He's having another drink, and he bought me one as well. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're being friendly again. And Fabregas, Ooh. who looked great against Man United. Yeah. Even one man in a match. Didn't get many bonus points, no. obviously, because mm-hmm. that means nothing if you're man in a match. No. Um, but that's more of a, can I upgrade him to someone else from Chelsea? Because although he's playing really well, he's not getting that many FPL points. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of differing on the fence sort of picks. Yeah. But pretty much everyone else is probably out the door. Yeah, well, I'm a bit like you. Bin of Sin is, is pretty much full up as well and as you know I have activated my world card um, I either have to cut down my third striker so Vardy which I don't really want to do because he has been doing slightly better now and he does have the potential to get lots of points but the way my team needs to go forward now, I either have to drop that third striker spot right down to somebody cheaper, mm. which at the moment I've done to a Murray. Scoring or, goals for Brighton, Glenn Murray, Glenn Murray. It, yeah. Or I need to go much higher and forget about my defence and pretty much have the front three of Kane, Lukaku, Morata, you know. Um, so... I'm, it's, it's worrying me at the moment. Aguero is where Lukaku was in my team. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be Morata, but I am worried to go without Lukaku in my team, especially with his run of games just about to come up and with a possible return of Pogba over Christmas. And we all know that Lukaku is better with his best friend there. Yeah, he's so missing his BFF. He is. Um, it's Pogman. So I'm thinking definitely of just shipping Otamendi out because he's obviously suspended after picking up another yellow in the Arsenal match. Mm-hmm. And a bit like you, I just should have. I've been saying on here for weeks about getting rid of Ericsson. I should have just gone with my gut, really, and shipped him when I had the chance to a Salah or, you know, a second Man City midfielder. With Sun back in the picture, Ericsson just doesn't seem to get the chance to have as many explosive attacking chances Mm. as he got before. Tends to be the third man in a move. Yeah. And the second I sell him, we probably end up doing exactly what Kevin De Bruyne did when I sold him. Probably. Which is, you know, he sat back and gave the ball to everyone else, you know, was always the third person not getting many points. Second I sold him. Boom, starts scoring goals for fun and getting assists everywhere. So anyone who has Ericsson in their team, if myself and Atme Tavius is to sell him this game week, which, you know, he's already out in my wild card. Oh, he's already gone. He's already gone, so keep him. Just yeah, saying it. I might keep him. Leaving there. Yeah, you, well, you could just keep him. Yeah. You could just keep I'll, him. Because I'd only probably buy, like, Mane and he'll just end up kicking someone else in the face. <laughs> But yeah, if you can keep hold, I would because, uh, you know. He's been he, freed. Yeah, he's been freed. Nymph freed, yes. Nim freedom. Nim freedom. He, he, hashtag he, nim freedom. Hashtag nim freedom. So when Ericsson scores a goal, gets an assist, now you know what hashtag to use on the weekend. Nim freedom. Nim freedom. Um, talking about freedom, the FL Journal League, Luke Jennings is still pretty free at the top. He's 33 points clear at the top. Oh, okay. I've dropped down a couple to 55th. Um, and you've dropped a couple... You, you don't have to tell the people. ...to 98. If you're still in the top 100... Woo! I'll you know, take it. You know, that was, your, that was your goal. So we're still on target for that. Yep. Um, so yeah, so that was the league. Luke still trying for the top. Um, looking forward to... I want to say next week, but it's two weeks because of this international break. Uh-huh. Um, there is a uh-huh. big game waiting on the horizon. There is indeed. The horizon of North London. North London derby. Arsenal versus Spurs. How are you feeling about that one? Oh, well, this one obviously holds a lot of emotion for me. Um, 
seeing as it will be the first derby uh, that I will be without Dad, who of course was a massive <laughs> Spurs fan. So try and say that without getting upset. But um, yeah, so it's going to be a bit of a, an emotional one for me, this one. But I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And I think that it's always good. It's always an interesting one, isn't it? It's always, it's, it's always a, a feisty tasty game. Tasty fixture. Hmm. And uh, Arsenal do have the edge with wins at home. Yeah. Um, but Spurs have the better away record this season the last two times Spurs have played at the Emirates has been a one-all draw so I'm thinking if Arsenal plays the setup that was doing well and that he should have played against <laughs> yeah. City so Alaka, Ozil, Sanchez up front I think I'm going to go to a piece a Desmond Tutu but if he doesn't play those and does something weird again like shoving in a Wobi for no random reason <laughs> Then I'm going to say two one Spurs. Um, I'll I'm going more along the lines of that second one. I was thinking three one Spurs. Obviously, depending on whether or not all of their withdrawn players are actually fit, mm-hmm. which they probably are. Um, Arsenal. You were saying that the last couple have been draws. Yeah. In the and Arsenal haven't beaten Spurs in the last four games. Mm-hmm. And just a quick comparison between their main players. Obviously, Kane. Loves an off London derby. Yeah. Scoring six goals in the five league games. Mm-hmm. Basically scored in H1. <laughs> On the other hand, Sanchez has only scored one in six games. Yeah, no, he hasn't. So been. that's not a... He's not happy bunny there. I just not. don't see why we just didn't get rid. And um, hopefully we will, I suppose. So it's pretty much, if Kane plays, Kane will score. Mm-hmm. And Spurs will win. Yeah. But it's an off London derby, you never know. Well, we don't know. Well, yeah, but, you know, shh, we don't want to tell people that we know. No, no, but we do need to tell people that we know, because then we might get something right. <laughs> <laughs> I got something right last week. Well, yes, you did, and I got so something right So I'm going to live off that before, for about so. a month. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so, who have you picked as your support fixture? Supporting act is Leicester versus Man City. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going for a shock horror Man City win. Yeah. Um, to be fair, Leicester are in form. They are unbeaten in their last six games in all competitions. Yeah. But Man City have won their last 15 in all competitions. Mm. And I don't really see that ending ne- next game week. No. Um, but be a, be a reasonably close one. Yeah. Leicester will sit back and try and hit on the counter. And it will, I'll go 2-1. 2-1 Man City. I see a 3-2 to City on that one. Um, In the last six matches, Man City have failed to score more than two goals against Leicester. Mm -hmm. But I really don't think that will, like you said, I don't think that will really matter much in this particular match. And with Mahrez back amongst the goals, knowing my luck, if I sell Vardy, he'll manage to get a couple. So yeah, I'm thinking... probably. It'll be Nim Freedomed. Yeah, it will be Nim Freedomed. There's going to be a lot of Nim Freedoms in the, in the coming game weeks. Lots of little Nim Freedoms. All the ones that I let free. Troopers and Ericsons and Vardies. Let out the paddock. Have, they're all about to have Pastures parties. Pastures new. Parties and points. So anyone who has those players, you know, you're about you're about to cash in big stuff. <laughs> Surely accept a thank you card. Yeah. Yeah, you can all thank me kindly with lots of lovely tweets. <laughs> tweets. Tweets. <laughs> ah, so have you picked anything surprising for your surprise pick? I've gone for Liverpool, Southampton. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going actually with a Southampton win. Oh, that's quite yeah, surprising. It is, it is. Although, maybe not. When you look at their previous fixtures, that says that the Saints are unbeaten. Against Liverpool in their last five. Ooh. Four of which... That is them cursed now. <laughs> yeah, four of which they've kept a clean sheet. Oh, cool. But he obviously sees Van Dyke playing against the club who he pretty much really wanted to sign for in the summer. Mm-hmm. So where's his head going to be at? If mm-hmm. he even plays, you know, he may not... He may be rested, quote-unquote. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I think, I think Southampton will probably just sit in, maybe grab something on the counter. Mm. 
and maybe not so silly as well if you consider that maybe some of Liverpool's more kind of important players are out due to injury and or will have quite far to go for international matches. So Yeah, the big hitters have some journey to do. I mean, they'll be there. But oh, yeah, just, of course, of course, know, yeah. On the back of all the travelling and such. Do you have such a surprising fixture as mine? Well, I, I've i gone for some of the maybe not so kind of surprising teams and I've gone with Huddersfield versus Bournemouth. Ooh, under yeah. the radar, that one. Yeah, they, they've they both won a similar amount of matches this season, Huddersfield 4 to Bournemouth 3. Mm. Um, so I'm expecting goals in this match, but I am going to go with a draw. And they both have had a low goal average, Bournemouth 0.6. For Huddersfield, 0.73. So that's under a goal a game, really. So, yeah. Mm. Um, but they have both been equally letting in, <laughs> on average, a goal a game. So, yeah, and that's since Huddersfield went first few games without clean sheets. So it just yeah. shows how many they've conceded since. Yeah, exactly. So they share created chances, 0.45. So I, I really do think... A this one has a draw written all over it, but although they, you know, have those sorts of averages, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick another Desmond out there. I think with a two-two. Desmond twins. Desmond twins. I don't think it's gonna be a snore draw. It's gonna be goals galore. Goals, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's a great way to end. <laughs> no snore draws this week. We want goals galore. Yes. Come on now, Please. we've we've been we've been flattering these teams for weeks now, saying they're going to get more goals than they actually yeah. have. Let's actually see it happen. Yeah, do it. <laughs> um, and on that threatening tone, um, we should best go. Um, check out the website fpljournal.com, uh, the Twitter page at fpljournalblog, my Twitter at Octavius, my Twitter at Nymphria TV. Uh, check out the back catalogue of all these episodes. They are on there now. I've yep. sent the files. Yeah, there was Finally an influx of videos them. on the YouTube channel, <laughs> youtube.com forward slash FPL Nymphria, and the podcast on other places like iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. Don't forget to leave reviews, likes, comments, you know, some feedback, yeah, questions, cool. you know, just, yeah. you know, keep it going with the chatter. Good luck to the Republic of Ireland, the Northern Ireland, yep. in their World Cup qualifiers against Denmark and Switzerland. And good luck to all those watching the England game. I hope you enjoy your naps. <laughs> um, but never forget to keep popping. Hashtag keep popping. <laughs>